and start. Just, I'm going to be walking around taking pictures. Oh, so don't get like alarmed. No, no. Oh. All right, hello guys. So, as many of you must know, uh, I'm going to explain today how to land an internship with no experience. But let me tell you, this is not going to be a one-man show. We have valuable uh, students in the back that are going to share their success stories as well. Now, by no means does this mean that we're experts or anything. We've just done certain things that we've seen that has given us results and we want to share them, all right? We know too many people who have graduated, who don't have any connections, who could have had many connections before they graduated, uh, and had multiple job offers, and just, so you could be able to seamlessly uh, transfer from studying in school to a full-time job and hit the ground running, all right? So, this is my agenda for today. It's gonna to be around one hour. Um, First thing I'm going to do is introduce myself with the me slide. Second, I'm going to explain to you three important things. Why should you get this experience and why is it valuable to you? I'm going to share with you a little bit of my story, my no-nos, what I did wrong, my aha moment when I noticed what I was doing was wrong, and how I improved. All right. After that, we're going to share the success stories and I'm going to teach you how to take your first step into making this path of yours worthwhile and how to become a leader in a sense, okay? So, oh, and don't forget, we have continuous Q&A. So if there's something that I went over too quickly, please don't, you know, just call me out on it. Hey, really, like, what the hell is that? Or can you explain on that or what's going on here, okay? So I'm trying to run this as informal as possible. So my name is Rolando Gonzalez and I'm the Microsoft student partner here. I started uh, last semester, and so far I've done three workshops, and this would be my fourth. So um, I'm studying computer engineering um, with a concentration in embedded systems, and I'm a third year student. Also, I enjoy aerial photography on my drone and roller skating, but I typically don't do those together. All right, it's kind of a bad mix. Um, this is my email. If you guys want to take note of it, and this is my site. Now, one important thing is, I'm going to show you right here. If you go to my site, you can download my sample resume and my PowerPoint slide. Let me see how this works. This is my website, and that's the website on the top left. You're going to be able to see the slide deck here, the same one I'm presenting, and a sample resume. You can view it, you can download it, do as you like. I'm going to come back here, and this is it, rolandoglez.azurewebsites.net. I'm going to share this contact info again at the end, in case you're not convinced to contact me now, but you are later on. I'm um, sorry about that. So here it is again. Give you a few seconds if you're going to do anything. All right, so let's jump to it. So why get experience? So I'm going to share with you a cheesy quote I found online. And it says, the only source of knowledge is experience by Albert Einstein. And what I really mean by that is there's no other way you're going to go into an interview with a company you really, really want to go for. And say you've done anything, you've got anything valuable to them without actually doing something, right? Whether that's joining a club, whether that's you know just gathering your friends and doing something cool if you've already got those technical skills or whatever it may be. But you can't just, the first thing you're gonna, you're gonna um, encounter is you're gonna think, oh, let, let me get, grab a, an interview, right? So let me do my resume, grab an interview. You go into the interview and first thing they do is, okay, what have you done? You know, share with us your passions, you know, what project have you worked on? And if you've got nothing to show, you don't have anything valuable to bring to the table. So that's, that's like the reality check right there. If you don't have anything, you can't sell on anything in that interview. I'm gonna go a little bit more in detail. 
um, into, into this topic later on. So let me start off by saying the faults that I, ex that I recognized at some point. Um, for example, um, when I, I transferred here from Miami Dade College, and even through Miami Dade College, when I came to FIU, I still had no vision or goals. I had no idea what computer engineering, where it was going to take me, or if I was even going to do computer engineering. I thought of computer science as well. Second, I had no motivation to become involved. I thought that all the clubs were just a waste of time, and I was like, no, I'd rather stay home. I've got something better to do. But actually, I changed my mind way later on, and you'll see why. So I, I usually shied away from the events, especially uh, the many, many events Stephanie Strange sends out. And you got, I hear a lot of people like, oh, man, she sent so many emails. Like, I'm so tired of them. They're all the same thing, blah, blah, blah. And the reason why you say that is because you don't see the potential in them. You don't feel prepared to go in there and say, okay, there's, um, there's this event, I'm gonna go to it and see what I can learn from it. You're gonna think, nah, you know, I already know that, or I'll learn that later on. And I'm really glad that you guys took the first step to come here, whether it was me recruiting you out there in the door, or actually reading those emails and coming. Who came because of the email? So about 50% of you came because of the email. <laughs> All right, great. Um, so. The reason why I wasn't becoming involved is because I felt unprepared. And honestly, I'm prepared because I didn't have any knowledge. You know, I didn't have any insiders. Like a mentor could tell you, hey, this works and this is why it works. I didn't have that. And I did poorly in school too because I didn't have a vision. I didn't have anything pushing me to tell me, okay, if I do this, then I'll get this. And the this is the full-time offer of 100K, you know. That, that's the final point here. It might not be 100K, but you know, 100K sounds really nice, right? Six figures? Mm. Right, okay, awesome. So, because of all that, I never researched professional development. And that's a little bit of what this um, presentation today is gonna be about. So, when did I change? I had this like aha moment because of my girlfriend. So, she is studying MIS and she joined Beta, a business organization. And she told me, oh, I'm going to join this e-board. I'm going to start off at Webmaster. And I'm here thinking, wow, you've got balls. Like, you, you don't know anything about being a Webmaster. And you're just going to go in there and run and say, hey, you know, here I am. I'm going to do whatever I can do. I'm going to learn whatever I need to learn to, um, to fit a certain need. And that need was an organization that needed a Webmaster. And that's really what made me tick. And I'm like, well, I've got two things. Either I'm going to stay at home bored while she's at these meetings, or I'm actually going to do the same and see if it's any worth it. So that's when I received an email from the Aerospace Engineering Club. I was sitting in a really boring class, and I got this email, hey, like in, in two hours, come. We're going we're gonna to build planes, and we're recruiting for these positions. So I show up. The room is full of it. Can you show your plane? My yeah, so this is Keisha's plane. Okay, so there was there was a plane in there, like how many times this this size? Maybe like three. So three times this size, so way cooler than this. And pretty cool though. Yeah. And I'm like, alright, I definitely want to join. You know, I had already gotten a plane of mine, like a foamy just for noobs, and I was like, but this is a cool club, you know, because it's it's there's gotta be engineering in there. I don't know what engineering it has, but I should probably, you know, get in contact with these people. So, some of the first things that happened in that meeting were they were recruiting, and one of the positions was webmaster, and I'm like, well, if my girlfriend did it. I should always have that, <laughs> right? So, I go in there, and they call out webmaster, and I'm like, all right, since I have no experience, I'm just gonna stay shut. If somebody has experience, they'll come up. If nobody has experience, and they call it twice, I'm going up. So that's what happened. They called twice, and I went up, and I said, hey guys. I don't have any experience, but I'm willing to learn. And forget it, I'll get you what you need. And that's where it all started. Because when I joined um, Aerospace Engineering Club, who is hosting all of our food back there and all the goodies, and we've got great personnel, Eddie, <laughs> and a lot of others who were here before this event. All right? So that's when I first felt like, OK, there could be something in this, but it's the results from that that have um, allowed me to see things backwards, really. Like, I kind of took a chance. Listen, I'm going to commit to this and see how it goes, and then now I've noticed, wow, that has really helped a lot. So this is how I've improved. 
So I found a mentor to show me the ways, and that was my girlfriend, all right? So you can find a mentor yourself. We're, I'm actually gonna be part of a new club called Aspire, right? Has anybody heard of it? All right, well it's brand new, but it's gonna be big. And that's where you guys can source some of your mentors, but other mentors can be um, a cousin of yours, or, or another student that, that you've befriended that are like juniors, seniors that you see that are really, really involved. And if you have questions like, hey, you know, why should I become involved? Just ask them. They'll, they'll tell you why they're involved. Aside from that, um, I've, I've improved in getting my resume up to date. If I have a company walking through that door saying, hey, Rolando, we'd love to meet you. Can you send me a resume? I, I can have that resume sent out in under an hour. I can revise it to that company and boom, that's it. But I already have it like 99% done. Sometimes I even send it just as it is because I think that's good enough. All right? Um, I've prepared for interviews. I'm going to share on my website some of the YouTube videos I've just gone in and checked out because I didn't know how to prepare. So I just went on YouTube. How to interview. You know, how to have, um, how to have an elevator speak, speech. Right? And that's it. Just... Once you learn that the results are there and you need to get to that new level, you're gonna start you know, searching for ways yourself. Um, I've gone to career fairs. I've learned that the first time you go to the career fair, you're gonna blow it. Like you're gonna be really, really bad. Or at least in my experience, in my friend's experiences, we get there and our legs are shaking. Oh man, I don't know how to talk to this company. They ask you one of those weird questions like you've got 27 balls and three scales, and you're like, what? And yeah, so you practice. So the first time you go, you might not be great, but by the second time, once you've done all your professional development and you've gone to Career Center and you've got mentors from Aspire, you're gonna kill it, all right? Now, I've gone to competitions as well. That first picture um, that I showed of myself, that was actually last weekend at J.P. Morgan Chase. All right, the competition wasn't great, but I learned that maybe that wasn't the competition for me, but there are others that are really, really good for you. That competition was computer science, and that wasn't my best skill. So, but at least, hey, I took the courage to go and check it out, and nothing happened. I just learned, all right? So, I've also looked into internships, and I'll tell my story about that a little later. And I've expanded my network with a killer LinkedIn, all right? Um, you can see that all in my resume and stuff. Uh, I'll post it on, on my website. So, we're gonna go ahead and introduce the motivational speeches. I'm gonna start with Aspire, all right? This is the club that will hook you up with a mentor for free. You know, it's just people who wanna share their knowledge. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gabriel. Gabriel. Yes, yeah. Gabriel. Um, right now I'm the head of the computer engineering mentors for the Aspire Club. Basically what the Aspire Club is, is just you are either mentee or mentor. If you're 70 credits, Below, you're a mentee. If you're 70 credits above, you're a mentor. So um, like Rondo said earlier, um, he had a mentor. Unfortunately, I didn't have a mentor when I was um, going to school. I transferred from Miami-Dade, and coming here was, was really bad. I didn't know anyone here. I just went to class, came home, and then just studied, did some other things, but I didn't have a kind of a mentor kind of guiding me and telling me, this is the classes you're supposed to take. This is the stuff you're supposed to do. These are the teachers that are professors that you should take. So kind of like that wasn't what I had. But then now with this new um, association or organization called Aspire, that's what we're trying to help out because we didn't have that, but we're trying to give it back to the students, freshmen, sophomores and that are getting in right now. So that's what Aspire is all about. We help out with resumes. Uh, I have two mentees and I already helped them out with their resume. They're actually there in line waiting to get talked to by State Farm and other um, companies, big companies that are there. So hopefully, you know, with the mentorship that I gave them for the, for the two weeks that I've talked to them, they've already been ready and already there getting their resume to critiques. So also like 30 elevator speeches, we help that as well. Just being more professional, because in the end of the day, we all want to be professional engineers, correct? We want to get, once we graduate, we want to have a job. So just like this, this is brand new, and we're gonna try to like mold the mentees to become eventually mentors, and it's just a, a circle of a cycle, just keep on going and going. So um, at the end, I'm, I'm gonna be here, so if you guys have any more questions or more info, if you want to be a mentor or mentee, just um, let me know. So is this open to all students? Yes, all students. And what if you don't have the experience of a mentor and you have over 70 credits? 
Well, that's where um, myself as being head of the mentors, uh, we have also for electrical engineers, civil, um, environmental, we have heads. The, usually the heads are the ones that kind of like guide the mentors. So if you need help, you know, we're, we're all here to help each other out. We're all students just trying to help each other out, eventually be engineers, um, professional engineers. So it's just a tag, you'll still learn even if you're considered a mentor. Yeah. So it'll be leads on top of you. Correct. Yes. Right. I enjoy. Oh, at, at the end, oh, well, um, yeah, I'm just, just give me your info, like we just cross over right now. Okay, awesome. Yeah, you can either send it to him or that email. Yes. I'm part of the group as well. Okay. All right? I'll post it up real soon. Um, so our first motivational speaker is? <laughs> Kishan. <laughs> All right. Uh, how's it going everyone? My name is Kishan Kapu and I'm a member of the Aerospace Engineering Club. Uh, I've been with the Aerospace Engineering Club since the beginning, just like Roly. Like that meeting that Roly was talking about was actually the first meeting where we like created our e-board and Roly and I um, were members, became members of the e-board there. Internships or job school because my goal when I came here was to just like um, not waste time getting an internship and just like take all my credits through all my semesters, not skip a semester with an internship or something and just graduate. Um, and so up to now that has still been the case, um, but you know, with my involvement in the Aerospace Engineering Club, I started to change my mind a little bit because I've seen how easy it is Super easy. Yeah, we're exactly. like a super that, hot club. So, <laughs> seriously. But so, a everybody great point that I want to bring across is how easy it is to like land an internship or get a job, because that's what I have experienced firsthand, being part of the club. When you're involved like this in something like this, employers are extremely interested in in what you've done in um, what you've been involved with. If you tell them, if we go to like, you know, I've heard from a lot of people that have gone to in interviews for an internship. They, t they tell them, hey, I'm part of this aerospace engineering club at, at FIU. And they're like, tell me about that. They want to know what, what we're cool. doing. Yeah, they're very interested in that. And they kind of just keep talking about that there. And that's what basically really helps you land an in in internship. And so I've seen that a bunch of times with a lot of members of our club where I thought it was like really difficult to get an internship somewhere, get a job, because I wasn't really that involved with anything when I, when I, at, in the beginning, right? I was just same, same, same thing. I was just coming here, coming to class, reading my books, taking my exams, and done. But with the club, you just meet a lot of people. You, you get a really fun experience throughout your whole, and you learn from your them. whole you learn college career, and you learn from other people what they're doing, and that kind of motivates you yourself. So that's a great point too when joining a club. So that that's the point I'm trying to make is get involved. Uh, and like every time I talk to people about it, is that's kind of what I am on is really get involved. And that's coming from someone who really did not want to get involved in anything. I just wanted to like come here, get my degree, and get up. That was it. Uh, but. I was uh, very lucky to be, you know, be a member of, uh, become a member of the Aerospace Engineering Club, and I've had a really great time ever since. It it motivates you to, to you know, strive for the best that you can because you have people around you that, you know, motivate you. It it motivates you because you can see you can see how other people experience an interview or an internship and they'll tell you hey yeah i landed an internship with boeing or lockheed martin you got your own mentors in there or spacex yeah and you're like that's coming whoa that that's pretty awesome so yeah definitely get involved that's what i'm trying to why are you involved? especially why am i involved well the the here, here's the reason why i got involved in aerospace engineering club uh, the main reason was uh, they needed a pilot when they started, and so it was a what's it called? A senior design team. They needed a pilot for their project, and I saw the email from Stephanie Strange, and um, I immediately replied to it saying, "Hey, I I'm a, I fly model airplanes. I want to be 
your pilot, and I met with them, and... How long have you been flying that organization? Oh, uh... Since he was eight, born. <laughs> pretty much. Eight years, eight years, eight or nine years. So and like when so, he was four and a half. <laughs> so, you know, I had the opportunity to combine my hobby with school, which is perfect. So I, I, that's what really pushed me to be like, okay, just go for this. Don't and then you realize the results. And then that's when I realized, you know, this is like something big. You, you like start, like, it's, you get a completely different sense of what's going on on campus too, because you talk to faculty here, you talk to the professors. They you have a reason They to. come to you to like say, hey, I have this class and I want you to come talk to the, to the students there. And you go and they're like, hey, thanks. You, you get to know professors on a personal level You've got kind a bigger of. connection. Yeah, it's 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 really great. There's like no downside at all to to <clears throat> being involved. only that you're not wasting your time now. Yeah, that's and cool. it keeps you busy. Uh, that's a that's a great thing too. I mean, <clears throat> you know, um, you know, instead of constantly sitting behind your books and just studying and doing homework, which we all need to do, it's also a nice nice thing to apply the knowledge you learn to something real. And that's what we do. Like, if you guys want, you can swing by the room in 23, 30, and see the plane right there that we're actually building right now. And we already, we built three, well, we built two planes. We're working on the third one right now for the competition, which is another great experience. We go to a competition, a yearly competition. Uh, for now, that's what we do. We want to expand into more. Uh, but since we're a young club, we, we're just doing the one thing right now and then we're planning on expanding but uh, going to the competition is also a really great experience it's you know great fun you meet people from other colleges all over the world and you have a great time with the group that you go with the really one that the yellow went I went and it was just a really fun time so yeah I'll uh, I'll go ahead and let uh, Daniela speak right now I probably been going on for a while. But yeah, definitely get involved. That's really something that's going to help you out. Thanks. Right. So what Keisha didn't tell you, because he's kind of shy about it, is that he's like the lead engineer there. Well, is that true? Manufacturer. OK, yeah. great. <laughs> he's the one heading the entire thing. In fact, he was president up until very recently ago, because he had some problems getting back into the States. Um, and he was heading the whole thing ever since. So please let, let us introduce to you Daniela Bernal, our next motivational speaker, who does great at speeches you will see just right now. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, this one, I'm going to kind of wing it a little bit because I've been working on different things for my projects today. So um, I actually started on the aerospace engineering e-board as well. I was at the same meeting that Roly was talking about. And the exact same thing that Roly was thinking what, what is what, what was going through my head that day too. I was like, if they call it twice, I'm going to go up and I'm going to try it. So I did. I started um, first e-board of the aerospace engineering club, uh, sophomore. And really, I only knew how to do integrals. I didn't know anything about how to apply my engineering knowledge to anything besides, you know, here's this beam, calculate the stresses on it, you know? And that's something that going to class, you that's all you learn. You don't get to actually apply your knowledge, which is why it's so important to get involved, like Keishan said. You know, it's such a cliche term. We hear it, you know, ever since we're freshmen going at orientation, like get involved, get involved. Exactly. But, but we don't do anything. So my journey here started uh, as a freshman. I knew I wanted to do space. I love space. I love everything about space. I think it's the coolest thing ever. And I love rockets. It's my favorite thing. But you know, you have this goal, and then you start, you look at it, and then you have to take text steps backwards, right, to see what are the steps I need to take to get towards my goal. So the first thing I do is I need to get experience, right, because I do only know how to do math. Like, that's it, right? I don't know how to apply that math to actual engineering. So I started, my first experience was doing research, because I wasn't sure exactly whether I wanted to go into the actual design part of engineering or more research. So I did research in an optics research lab my freshman year. And I remember going up to talk to the physics professor. Um, he had come to get a lecture at one of my classes, and I was scared, like scared to death, because I was going to go talk to this really smart guy about optics, and I had no experience doing anything with optics. Like, I barely knew what like the focal length of a lens was. And I talked to him, and I told him, 
you know, I don't know anything, but I really want to learn. And that's the only thing professors want to hear. That's the only thing we as clubs want to hear when we get new members, is your willingness to learn. So I did that, and that sparked my entire journey to learning what I want to do with my career, which now I know is um, designing propulsion systems for rockets. So doing that, I started joining different clubs, and you know, right now, um, for, our, for the aerospace plane, I did the entire performance analysis and the sizing of the plane. So I went from knowing barely how to do algebra to actually sizing this aircraft and telling the entire team, these are the dimensions the aircraft has to be, if not, it's not going to fly. And you know, we'd be in design meetings and you know, we'd get all these ideas like, oh my god, why don't we make the wing like a thousand feet? But then, you know, if you make the wing a thousand feet and you leave the tail teeny tiny, your plane's going to start spinning. So you know, it's those kind of things that you start learning as you apply your different concepts, right? And apart from aerospace, I'm also the team captain for our NASA student launch team this year at the university. Um, it's a competition where we actually have to apply all our engineering knowledge in one competition. It's crazy because we have to design a launch vehicle. We have to design an autonomous ground support equipment, which is basically, for those of you who don't know rocket terms, is this thing that we put the rocket on and it has to autonomously grab a payload and put it inside the rocket, close the rocket after you put the payload inside, lift the rocket, and then launch it. So, and that's all done autonomously. We just press go, and it has to do it. So we're currently working on that. Um, our design is actually a little rover, and it's gonna use computer vision to go find a payload, put it inside a rocket, and then air into a rocket. It's pretty cool. But I remember um, when my friend Chris came to me at the beginning of last year. You know, I knew I was gonna be involved in this club because I loved rockets, and he comes to me and he says, listen, um, we don't have anyone to be team captain of the team, so if you don't do it, we're going to drop the competition. And I was like, oh crap. <laughs> I was like, I really want to do this competition, I really want this to happen, so you know what, I'm going to step up. Did I know anything about building a ground support equipment? No. Did I know anything about a solid rocket motor? Absolutely not. You know, did I know anything about how to build an airframe? No. But those are just things that you learn by taking initiative, you know. It's something that when you come to school, I know I was freaked out. Ever, I mean, every time I have you know gone to a new opportunity, I'm freaked out. You know, it's but it's that taking initiative. It's you know I don't know what this is, but I don't care what the learning curve is. I'm still gonna learn, and that's why being involved with all these clubs it's so great because then you go to a company, and I remember my first career fair ever was the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, or the CHEF conference, um, two years ago. Um, and I went with no experience on my resume besides being in the aerospace club, basically, and my research experience. And that conference, I went and I prepared, like Roly said, um, I practiced a lot of interviews in the mirror, me. Mock interviews there yeah. are as well. <laughs> right, right in the mirror. I practiced my elevator speech in front of the mirror. Um, I gave my elevator speech to my mom, to my sister, to my dog. Like, I did a lot of work. And I went to this conference, and no matter how afraid I was, I knew that the minute I stepped in front of the recruiter and I gave them my hand and I said, hi, my name is Daniela, that that was the moment that was going to decide whether or not I got the job. And at that conference, you know, I was afraid I wasn't going to get any offers because of the fact that I had no prior internship experience. And then, you know, I only knew how to kind of sort of maybe build a plane. But I went and I ended up getting three different offers at my first ever career fair with thousands of other Hispanic engineers there. So I got offers with uh, GE Aviation, GE Power and Water, and Northrop Grumman. And you know, once I got that, that completely boosted my confidence and started my entire journey here through FIU, where this year, well, actually last past semester, I went to two career conferences. I went to the HENA Career Conference, and I went to the Society of Women Engineers Conference. All right, by the way, side note, all these conferences are available to everybody. I know I wasn't aware of that, but at the Society of Hispanic Engineers Conference, you see Asian people, you see all kinds of people. At the Women's Engineers Conference, there are plenty of guys. So don't be daunted by the name of a conference just because maybe you don't fit in that, in that category. So I went to these conferences, and I ended up getting offers pretty much from every single big aerospace company. I got offers from Boeing. I got an offer from Lockheed Martin. I got an offer from Northrop Grumman, and I got my offer from SpaceX, which was my dream company is my dream company. So, you know, it's just a testament to the fact that 
no matter where you start, and I'm telling you that I started from like ground zero, only knowing how to do integrals, literally. That was my favorite thing to do all day, like take integrals. From that point to leading the sizing analysis of our aircraft and the performance analysis, to being team captain of the student launch, to getting an internship at SpaceX, which is extremely coveted in anywhere in the aerospace engineering world. It's, it can be done. There's no reason why you can't. And it just takes initiative, it takes confidence, and it takes a little bit of faith in yourself because you can't do it. No matter what your grades are, no matter what you'd like to do, whatever your final goal is, you can achieve it. Um, I know, I don't know how much time I have really, so just stop me whenever. But I know for my SpaceX yeah. interview, what? Okay. I know for my SpaceX interview, since it has been my dream company ever since I decided that I wanted to do propulsion for rockets, I, I got a call about a week before I went to the Society of, no, about a week before, no, I lied. One day before I left for the HENAC conference, I got a call from a SpaceX recruiter from applying online, and she was like, do you wanna have, like, I have an interview for you, I have a spot. And I remember I spent the entire HENAC conference Besides talking to Boeing recruiters and Lockheed recruiters and Northrop Grumman recruiters, I spent the entire conference studying for that internship, for that interview, I'm sorry. And you know, it just goes to show, if you really want something, you're gonna work for it, right? I mean, once you know your goal, you're going to work towards that goal. So I studied really hard for that interview, and- How'd you study? how did I study? Well, I knew the position that I was interviewing for. They had given me the department that it was in, and I looked up, my, the person who's gonna be interviewing me, I also got the name of him, LinkedIn. why? Yeah, and I looked him up on LinkedIn, and I started Googling him, and I found papers that he had written, I found what he has been working on, I found what he worked on in the past, and that gave me such an edge when I was talking to him, because I could relate the questions that he asked me and the answers I gave to his experience, which of course gave me a leg up over whoever else was interviewing. And for the interview, I don't know how many of you here have had an interview with a company. They're going to ask, no matter what kind of experience you have, they want to see what you gain from it, right? Whether it's an internship, whether it's a club, even if it's working at Starbucks, they're going to ask you, what did you gain from that? The response to this is going to make me look like I know things, right? And so I realized that in my SpaceX interview, or almost any other interview that I've had, because the person who interviewed me was the scariest thing of my life. He asked me, about one specific thing on my resume that was the air braking system for our NASA student launch rocket, which is basically a system that's gonna guide the rocket to an exact apogee, which we're working on right now. And he said, how does this work? And I was like, okay, X, Y, Z, this is how it works. And then he paused for a millisecond. He said, he said, tell me more, I don't understand. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just explained this to you. Okay, and so I, I explained it again. And then he told me for a third time, no, 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 tell me more, tell me more. And that's just going to, he, what he wanted to know was how in depth was I with his project. He wanted to know, was I lying? Did I just put this on my resume as a filler, right? So another like little tip, don't put anything in your resume that you cannot talk about, okay? Because he wanted to know, you know, what did she gain from designing this part of the vehicle, right? What did she learn? And yeah, that's my best advice, you know, get involved, do projects, learn from them, and be confident. That's honestly the best thing that's gonna get you forward. Thank you. Yeah. So, some of the things I wanna to add to that is that, yes, you do start with no experience, and yes, you need to know something. You've gotta know how to get started. And that goes back to having a mentor to tell you this is the right thing to do, this is not the right thing to do. And that's pretty much it. You know, there, there's there's certain um, there's certain stages to it. Knowing what to do, then having the confidence to do it, and then believing in that the time you're going to spend uh, preparing, the time you're going to spend submitting applications, the time you're going to spend um, make, making sure that you know exactly everything on your resume and you know how to sell that super super well, will all get you something you really really want. And in Danielle's case, it was an internship at SpaceX. So, that's pretty darn good. So next up, we have Evelyn Mojica. Hi guys, so my name is Evelyn, like Rolly said. You don't have to. 
Anyway, uh, so my story is a little bit different because I'm a lot older, so I'm turning 28 this year, and my first degree was in criminal justice. I was a social worker in SUPT, so you guys are all in a very good field. Uh, so I came in knowing that I needed to get involved, that I needed to get mentors, because I did everything that I didn't do doing my criminal justice degree, so I graduated with no experience, no research done, and it took me like almost two years to find a job. And, uh, so I came in knowing everything that I needed to do, but I came in like three and a half years ago, where it was like ASME, FSAE, and I think that was it. Well, so what are those? Uh, the clubs here on campus, the car guys and the guys who do the rockets is ASME. So what you have now is a lot more opportunities to get involved. I think SWE existed, maybe. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, so three years ago, there were a lot less opportunities to get involved. You had to like actively seek out research opportunities and things like that. They weren't like posted on every other board here on campus, right? So now you have opportunities to build a plane. I'm personally involved, even though I'm like their moral support person for the aero people. I'm personally involved with the Eco Engineering Club, which we're making, ooh, okay. We're making the battery electric vehicle for the Shell Eco Marathon that's happening in April. So, uh, in attempting to get involved three years ago, when barely anything is going on, it was a matter of getting to know my professors. And a lot of them became my mentors now. And I got involved in Theta Tau, which is the professional engineering fraternity. So I gained some mentors there that were peers of mine, but older, right? So, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I came from a non STEM related background, everything was like gangs in the US and how to deal with delinquent children and their families, right? So you come and then it was all fun, like Daniela said, integrating and deriving and all this and that or whatever. And I go through the process, I became involved in SWEET and then I had to learn how to teach other kids in like middle school and high school level how to build like uh, little circuit robots or whatnot. So if you guys don't know her, uh, Mariana. She was a president last year of Sweet. She was literally sitting there with me. She's like, so this is how you connect a simple circuit. And I was like, it took me like 30 minutes to get it. But uh, it's, it's things that recruiters look for, for you to be able to explain technical concepts in layman's terms, for people who don't know what you're talking about to understand. So these are skills you want to acquire getting involved. And so I've progressed to where I'm at now, where I've never in my life built a car before. And now I'm building a battery electric car. And so, uh, just because you don't know what you're doing or you come in not knowing calculus, these are things that you learn, you get tutored, you get involved, and then other, people's, other people who do know what they're doing can teach you, mentor you, and now I know how to connect a simple circuit, I think. So <laughs> I haven't done it since last semester, so I may need a refresher course. But uh, I can tell you from my personal experience, so I'm graduating now in May, and I have a job offer already that I've accepted with Lockheed in Orlando. And one of the things that I noticed that recruiters are like practically eating out of the palm of your hand is when you talk about this stuff. So they don't care that your GPA is a 3.98 or whatever. If you have that 3.0, they, they skim through it. If they see 3.0 or above, they don't care about your GPA. Like that goes out the window. So you meet the minimum requirements, cool. So how are you set aside from the other 300 kids that are trying to talk to the same recruiter, right? So the one thing that they love is hearing about this stuff. Like, so you got involved in Engineering Expo. For those of you who don't know what that is, there's gonna be in like the next two weeks, 1,500 uh, elementary, not middle and high schoolers around campus going through different labs and learning about engineering and what we do here. So they love that. You know, how do you give back? How do you uh, bring STEM opportunities to others? And also, how are you involved on campus? So with your fellow peers, like Aspire, the Mentoring Club, the Eco Club. We have freshmen in the Eco Club that are like, they show up to our meetings where we, uh, we're actually assembling stuff. And they're like, I'm a freshman, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, uh, here's a drill. <laughs> and this is how you do it. And so you gain that you're not born knowing all of this stuff and you use this to your advantage. Like, I got my first internship the year after my freshman year. I interviewed for it while I was still a freshman. The guy's like, so what have you done? I'm like, nothing, like legit, this is the only project that I have done. This is what I've been involved. It was a, for those of you who have, who have taken intro to engineering with Carmen, the little battery electric car she makes you do with the motor, no, maybe, yeah, she knows, okay. 
So that was like the only project that was involved. It was a wooden car with a DC motor and a rubber band, done, and four wheels. And so that was the only project that I talked about, and I was like, dude, I'm a freshman, like, this is it. And I got the internship, I interned with them twice, and now I'm gonna go work with Lockheed, different company from the one that I interned with. So it's very, for those of you who are not sure, who just wanna come in and get your book work done and go home because you wanna get on Xbox Live and play Call of Duty, that's fun, I do it, I love it, but this is gonna be that much more valuable when you enter into your senior year particularly, that a lot of people are like, oh, I don't have a job yet, what am I gonna do? This gives you a leg up on the competition, so when you do talk to that recruiter, even though you have, whatever, a 3.2 GPA, versus the next guy that has a 3.8, but if you have all these extracurriculars, you were involved, you gained all of this real engineering experience while you were a student, that makes you more valuable than the next person. Cool? Okay, that's it. Hi guys, I've noticed that you guys have been a little quiet. Do you guys have any questions so far? Uh, What's your name? Josh. Josh, okay. So, to my understanding, it seems like all these clubs are something that it, it revolves around... A competition of some sort. It seems like there, you know, at least to my imagination, there's like five to ten main people, and then there's dozens of other learning from them. Right. They're like leads, and so, then they give assignments to the smaller ones until those become leads. So uh, yeah, so I was kind of wondering. Uh, it seems obviously that the, the main people are the ones who really benefit the most. In yeah, members, those are the leaders. The leaders, the, the yeah. members, the dozens of other members, mm -hmm. they, they do still benefit even though they're kind of you know just there. Yeah. You know, it's really. It's not really that one member is going to benefit more than another, not at all. Because, you know, it's a learning experience, it's a learning curve. So your first year, of course you're not gonna, you know, do the performance analysis of the plane, which I talk about a lot because I love doing it. Because you don't have that experience. But you know, if, if for example, you join Aerospace Club and you came up to me and you're like, I'm really interested in this, you know, I'm gonna say, okay, here's, let's sit down, I'm gonna teach you, and the next year you do it yourself, you know? So it's just, not so much that you know freshmen aren't going to benefit as much as seniors or as much as juniors. It's everyone's going to benefit to the extent of their knowledge at the time, right? And you're just going to keep learning and building on those steps. Um, yeah. So um, um, it's it's not really like how you see it. Like there's like main members and, and less members. That's kind of like seeing it as some kind of hierarchy, which. It's, you shouldn't really see it like that. It's uh, more like um, just a group of students working on a project, and the people that uh, that you know uh, participate more than others, commitment. right? So it's the commitment that you give to the project that's that comes from you. It's not like oh he's the higher up, so he gets it. It's if we if there if you commit to it. If you work on the plane, if you work on the rocket, if you uh, drive yourself to learn more about it, when you go home, when you're done working here, you go home, you learn about it, you play around with SolidWorks when you go home, you can use that at your interview. So it's not like, oh, the, the higher ups are benefiting because they're the higher up. That's not how it works. Um, and, you know, I, I know from the Aerospace Engineer Club that. Um, people who I never thought would get an, uh, an internship, not saying, you know, they're like, they have a low GP or anything, but I just didn't, um, like, think they would they would get it. And like I said, how easy it is when when I heard, hey, I got, I got an internship at this company, and I'm like, okay, that's pretty awesome. And Roly said, you know, when I was, I was president, and, you know, the pilot and the lead manufacturer and everything, um, but like I haven't gotten an internship anywhere. I haven't looked for an internship anywhere, so that's why. But you know, it's it's not like you have to see it as oh, it's some kind of elite group that gets all the benefits. You know, it's your commitment to the project. Case in point to that, I think your question is um, um, over the summer. Uh, over the summer, when we were doing you know some research for the airplane, I remember Keisha was like, okay. The person who was doing our sizing and our performance last year isn't here anymore. He graduated. You know, what are we going to do? And then I was like, I'll do it. 
because I was always interested in that. That's something that I always like to do. I love playing with numbers. I love Excel. So, you know, that's the initiative that I took, which is what I was talking about earlier. It's like the initiative I took. I said, I'm going to do this. Did I know how to do it? Absolutely not at all. You know, I, I literally got an aerospace textbook, opened it up, and started devouring that book and learning how to do it, right? So I benefited what I benefited because I wanted to, right? Not because, you know, I was a senior member of the club. It's because I wanted to. I'd like to um, yeah, sure. add a comment. Um, I've been an e-board member of a club before, and, and really everybody who's a, uh, everybody who's part, I'm, I'm Will, by the way, um, and like I said, I was uh, an e-board member of uh, the Computer Simulation Society, and, and um, everybody contributes um, almost equally. Everybody has equity. Uh, in terms of the the group projects, however, the e-board members what they do specifically is is organize the club. They schedule things, send emails, um, they plan the project, and um, and yes, uh, to a certain degree, they delegate tasks to the other members. Um, but that that's really the purpose of the e-board is to manage and um, administer um, the club. And to sum it all up, it all comes back to courage. You know, what you think you can do with that club, and then how much time you believe in yourself, learning the things, because in the end, uh, none of those uproops are gonna be in your interview. It's just you and what you, you can share with them because of what you've learned on your own. So if you can sell yourself at a million dollar valuation, it's all on you. You know, you've put in the work. Whether they did 10 times more than you, if what you did was amazing, nonetheless, you're still gonna get it. Alrighty, uh, coming up is Eddie. Hey guys, you are in memory from uh, serving you food, so you know that's my specialty. Is I wait tables, so it's kind of in my blood. But I mean, I, I I'm in a club with these guys, so I've spent time in clubs. But I feel like everyone's concentrating on clubs. I want to talk to you about what I did without the use of a club. So. Spring last year, I took uh, Mechanical Design 1 and I did a research project on wind energy. I wanted to do our research project on ocean technology, but that was taken, so I ended up with wind energy. So spending time doing that research, I found that I was really interested in uh, designing a vertical axis wind turbine. So that's what I decided to do for my senior project in the fall. But I know nothing about it and don't really have aside from the research, any kind of knowledge of that stuff. So what I did was that I went and Googled uh, wind technology in Florida. And there is no wind energy in Florida, as most of you may or may not know. I didn't know it. Um, but we do have Nextera Energy, who's the number one wind provider of energy in America. And I live in West Palm Beach, and they just happen to be about five miles from my house. So I picked up the phone one day in the parking lot and I called the office at Nextera Energy. I hit one extension, didn't get anybody. I hit a next extension, leave a message since it came out of nowhere. I hit another button and I got a secretary. I asked that, or I told that secretary, I'm a student at FIU, I'm doing a senior project on wind energy. Is there anyone that I could talk to that could perhaps tell me what it is that I might do for the next step of my project? And she's like, oh, well, um, I have no idea. But if you send me an email with your information and maybe what you're looking for, I'll get it into the hands of the right people. So I did. And that was at 11 o'clock I made that phone call. By 4 o'clock that night, I was talking to the head of the wind department at that office who spends time, he spends like a week here and then a week in California working on the giant megawatt turbines that are out there that um, they're actually taking them down because of the fact that they found they were killing golden eagles, which are threatened species or endangered, I can't remember which they are. Um, but they were, there was a lot of deaths because of those turbines out there. So he was working with environmentalists to change where those turbines were located and actually redesign them because they were all kind of reaching the end of their lifespan. He just launched the project. They powered um, some branch of Google out there and now um, they want to work with him doing the new Google tour things that they do where you like you can hold up your phone on the tour and like go this way and it can show you what's over there and what's over there. 
But all I did one day was pick up the phone, make a phone call, and now he's been telling me about his project. I meet with him about my project. I actually went out with him. I've gone to his office twice to just hang out. He bought me lunch. It was great. And then another time, he's like, hey, you want to go get a beer? And I'm like, where? I had just one chance phone call that, you know, do you have some information? Do you not have some information? I've got, like, a mentor out there. And now, like, I bring it back here where I have a, a freshman kid that just started hanging out in our club room who I've been trying to lead him around, like, hey, come meet this administrator. Come meet this person. This is what I have to deal with when I try to order food for club meetings. But I'm teaching him. And then... One day, maybe I'll have the job the next day, and somebody will be calling me, and I can say, hey, this is what I did. I remember that. Like, I'll show you around. But like, you don't necessarily have to be involved with the club. You don't necessarily have to um, stay with the passion. Because I came to school to work with prosthetics. Like, I was going to do mechanical and biomedical. But then I met a guy who said he did the same thing I wanted to do with just a mechanical degree. So I'm like, well, then I want to get out of school and make some money. Then maybe I'll work on a master's or something. But that, my all came from, you know, I just picked up the phone one day and called it, because I was like, What's, what do I have to lose? Are they going to say no? All right, well, back to square one. Like, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. So, like, my thing that I would tell you is don't be afraid to just call somebody one day. Because to a company that shows that you have, like, the drive and the I don't care attitude, because I'm going to get this done, to just do something. And then that's kind of what they're looking for. They're not looking for, you know, the studious student who, you know, can't, do anything without his textbooks and his calculator. They're looking for the guy that they can trust to run a project or get something done. Like, hey, I need this by Friday. I'll get it to you by Thursday. No problem. But that's that's one of the things that I would say is different from what you've heard so far. Because yeah, it's great to be in a club. Like I wasn't in a club when I did this. Now I'm in a club and it's great. But not I know not everybody has time for a club. Because I got three kids, so having time for a club is really difficult for me. But I found that just by moving things around, it was easier to do it. So, but that's just something I wanted to share with you guys after listening to everybody else. I just don't want you guys to think I can only do this if I'm in a club. You can't, or you can do other things. Just the club's great. It looks, it kind of helps you with the bond. Because even now when I'm designing a wind turbine, this poor guy over here wanted to go home and get some sleep the other night. And I'm like, well, real quick, I got a couple questions you might be able to help me with about airfoils. So we ended up at 2 o'clock in the morning, like on the whiteboard, this whole thing was, we started off here. By the end of the night, it was all over here, and we had gone back and forth through a couple different designs, and I'm like, well, that was fun. He's like, yeah, fun for me too. So, but, you know, that's just the type of stuff that I would suggest for you guys. Like, don't be afraid, just go out there and do something, even if it's something that might be outside of your character. All right? All right, guys, so, thank you, Eddie. Um, I notice it is getting close to 2 p.m. If you guys have any commitments and you may want to leave, you are welcome to do so. But we're going to continue for a few couple minutes. I'm going to tell my story and I'm going to give you the next couple tasks that I think you should take in taking your first step. Um, I'm going to go real quick on those. So my story is I started off at the uh, Aerospace Engineering Club as a wet master, right? Uh, going to uh, executive board meetings 8 p.m. every week. And then uh, from there on, I decided to take a job at FIU. I've been there for a year, and a year after, I've already landed an internship at Lockheed Martin. All right, I've got several contacts. Um, I'm thinking I've got also uh, a mentorship at Microsoft. So I've started small, you know, going into a place where everyone should let you in, into a club. Then, because I talked about my club in my interview at FIU, um, my boss was like, wow, that's so cool, tell me more. And she hired me, uh, along with my uh, short technical skills. Um, from there on, I've applied you know, a lot of professional development, and I pushed my way into Microsoft, which I actually, it was an email sent to Aerospace Engineering Club. They were like, hey, can you get me uh, a guy? And then they were like, oh, these people thought it was spam. You know, because they're not into computer engineering, they can't tell spam from not spam. Um, so then I, like I said, I had my resume ready. I was able to send it out before anybody else, and it was nice enough. So that they called me. They just needed a guy quick. They didn't care if he had to learn about it, learn about whatever they were doing or not. So I've been learning my way through. Um, that, the Microsoft name has been pretty darn big, and every time I go to the career fair, they're like, oh, so 
when is it we're interviewing again? Like, can I give you an interview for this hour or that hour? So it's all about being ready. It's all about being at the right time, you know, having all those things ready. Because you never know when you're gonna get, when you're gonna meet a recruiter who's just like, oh, I like your face. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. They might like you for different reasons, but you just gotta be ready. And you just gotta believe that, okay, now I know what I want, and I've gotta be ready for any, any situation whatsoever. You might end up uh, drinking beer with, you know, the guy next to Arrow. So that's pretty much it, guys, for me. Um, let me let me tell you how to take action on this. If you if you really believe that what we've been talking about is is true and it happens, and you want to get on, you know, you want to become a leader. Um, I think your first step should be go to career services. You know, it's right next to the cafeteria over there. Those um, what are they called? Like crystal little blocks or whatever, right next to the cafeteria in the pit. You go there and you tell them how much you know about professional development. Do you have your resume ready? Do you have your elevator uh, pitch? You know, tell them what you know. And if you don't know, tell them, I wanna go to the career fair, or I wanna land an internship, help me do that. And they'll set you up with a plan. And you'll be back and forth, back and forth, but you'll be learning, okay? Um, next, if you wanna join a club, you, you should research all the student organizations on campus. You might find one in engineering. You might find one in main campus, but just look at their projects and see which one uh, would motivate you. Because employers are looking for passionate, seasoned leaders. And that would be your first step. Um, just become a leader, just join, and don't be that guy who's like, oh, I don't know how to do this, I'm gonna go home, because then you've got nothing to talk about, right? Just like I was explaining to him. You just gotta go in there and go against all odds, because I didn't know everything. Nobody here knew anything when they started. And just because they believed in themselves and they had somebody tell them, you know, you can do this, you can do this, they were able to do stuff. Um, you can find a mentor on the Aspire Club. I'm going to sh uh, show my email and you guys can let me know so we can reach out to you soon. And last but not least, kick ass. <laughs> Uh, I'm open for questions now. Do you guys have any? What is that? You work at Microsoft? Or... Uh, I'm a Microsoft student partner, so I host technology events. Like, uh, I posted intro, intro to Arduino, intro to Raspberry Pi, and now I'm work, uh, this is a soft skills um, that I'm hosting. Uh, what kind of websites do you guys use for internships? Like, Okay, so you want to join like web development type of internships? No, no, like how do you find internships? Oh, okay, does anybody have any pointers to that? FIU, 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 has, FIU has... FIU Career Services has a website. Has a website and they compile like a bunch of internships from every single business there. Um, so it's FIU Career Services Jobs. Okay, so but I mean, that's, that's a really good starting resource. So you can start getting your hands on Uh, oh, okay. yeah. uh, the career services can help you get that link specifically. that before or after you land it? When you land it, oh, okay. you sign, a, I think it's like a month after you even start it. So you, you start it in May, and in July is when you make the donation to the company. But anyway, um, other than the internship and all getting paid for it and all that other stuff, they do like professional development things. So for my interview with Lockheed and the two conferences I was going to, my mentor through Inroads, she came here on campus and had like a list of technical questions. I was like petrified that I was gonna get a technical question. And like she's not a mechanical engineer at all, but she Googled, she did her research and came with like 25 questions uh, geared towards mechanical engineers that I could have been asked. So they help prep you for the, they also do that here in career services, but like this is- That sounds pretty good. Entity, that, that's how I got my foot through the door getting my internship. So, and her too, she has a co-op here. A co -op.
So a comp is you work and you study at the same time, right? Yes. Okay. And when you refer people, they give you $100. I got $100 for referring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you had a question? I'm just saying uh, career fair is tomorrow. So yeah, yeah, career fair is tomorrow, guys, and Friday. So technical career fair is tomorrow, um, 10 to 2, at the GC, what's that called? Auditorium? Ballroom. 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 GC Ballroom. And then again Friday, 10 to 2, I believe. There's going to be 33 companies tomorrow and 60 companies.